presidente Obama. Mexico gets a new president tomorrow as Enrique Peña Nieto is sworn in. Nieto's party is known for its 70 years of autocratic rule, which ended in 2000 in what some call Mexico's first fair election. Now they're back, and Nieto says they're transformed, but in any case, he faces a difficult task. The Post's Bill Booth joins us now from Mexico City. And Bill, you broke a story in today's paper revealing documents listing 25,000 people missing in Mexico, which illustrates the toll of the violence there. And I want to talk about that in a minute. Uh, but first, what do we expect from Peña Nieto when he takes over? Um, Peña Nieto is uh, youthful, uh, dynamic, 46-year-old, uh, professional, very professional politician. So he is the new face of this whole party. They're coming back into power after 12 years out. And he has a very ambitious agenda. And, and what is that agenda? He is saying that he was going to reduce uh, poverty in Mexico. About half of Mexicans are uh, poor, and about half of Mexicans are now middle class. And he says he is going to um, push 15 million Mexicans, which is about a third of all the poor people in Mexico, into the middle class. He promises to get half of all college-age Mexicans into college which would be a big deal. Mexico has one of the lowest attendance rates of higher education in Latin America. And Peña Nieto promises to reduce the homicide rate in Mexico by half. These are big numbers and very ambitious numbers. And that's President Obama even used the word. This is a very ambitious agenda. There's this very strong trade relationship and cultural relationship between the U.S. and Mexico. But to a considerable extent, the bilateral relationship has been defined by the drug war, by the violence in Mexico, a lot of it near the U.S. border. And now we have, uh, at the ballot in November, American states legalizing at least marijuana. And I wonder how that plays in Mexico since we've leaned on them so hard in this drug war. Okay, so good. Two questions. So in terms of the marijuana legalization in Colorado and Washington, Peña Nieto and his people have said they are going to look at this very closely because if the gringos are going to legalize weed in the United States, then um, the Mexicans are asking why are they spending so much uh, treasure and blood fighting cartels, particularly the cartels that, uh, or the wings of the cartels that produce marijuana. But if it's free and legal and they're watching CNN and Espanol and watching people light up uh, in these two states, they are definitely going to take a new approach. Well, and the last thing, your story today touching on the stakes of this drug war and the violence that ensues. Uh, talk about your reporting and what you discovered, 25,000 missing people. We know about a lot of the people killed and killed very publicly, but this 25,000 Mexicans missing is a government figure, and it is really high and really surprising in Mexico. And it's a figure that the government has not released that we got hold of at the Washington Post, and uh, it's creating quite a stir here today. It's, it's, it's a higher number than a lot of human rights people thought, and uh, it shows the extent of maybe the, the, the atmosphere of kind of lawlessness and chaos that, um, that, that took over large parts of Mexico during the last six years. Okay. Uh, Bill Booth in Mexico City tonight. Thanks a lot for uh, filling us in. Anytime.